Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be using some of the kinematics that we found for our rods and roller problem in order to investigate the conservation of energy. So our setup is going to look the same. We're going to have a rod connected to a pin at A and connected to another rod at B. And that second rod is going to be connected to a roller at C. So let's get the labels of these three points. As a reminder, both of these rods had a length L and an angle theta with the horizontal. Finally, this roller had a radius r. What we haven't said is that both of these are going to have some mass, since we're going to need that for the energy. So the rods are going to have a mass mr, and the rollers, the roller, is going to have a mass mc. And we'll be using the results from our previous kinematics video. All we need are the velocities of this point c, which was 2 omega l times sine of theta, the angular velocity of our roller, which was 2 omega l over r sine theta. So with conservation of energy, we're looking at two separate states. State 1 is going to be our initial state in this case, and we're going to say that this is at rest, which just means that omega is equal to 0. And we're going to set our theta, so this is just the position of both of these rods, as equal to some unknown value theta 1. Now if we look at state 2, we don't know anything about our omega value. So we're going to say that omega of our rod AB is equal to a negative omega of our rod BC, which we're going to call a negative omega. Our theta is just going to be equal to theta 2. All right, so in very general terms, there's no work in our system, so we can write our conservation of energy equation as the sum of the potential energy and kinetic energy at state 1, which must be equal to the potential energy and kinetic energy at state 2. Now we don't have any springs, so the potential energy is easy to write in this case. And it's just going to be 2 because we have two rods multiplied by the mass of the rod multiplied by g times h. I'm just going to use h1 to indicate that we're talking about the height at state 1. So what we're interested in is the height of the center of gravity of our rod. We said that state 1 was at rest, and that means that it can't have any kinetic energy. So we can just move on to state 2. And we'll say exactly the same thing, except instead of h1, we're just going to be using h2. And then we need to deal with the kinetic energy of state 2. So I'm just going to write our most general form of kinetic energy. So for any body, we can write that the kinetic energy is 1 half multiplied by the mass multiplied by the velocity of some point p. And to this, we're going to add 1 half multiplied by the moment of inertia about p multiplied by omega squared. And then finally, since this point P is not necessarily the center of mass, we need to have another term, which is the mass multiplied by the omega vector, which is dotted with R crossed with the velocity of the point that we're interested in. And we need to write the kinetic energy of all three of our bodies. So for our first body, the rod AB, we're going to choose our point to be at A. And the reason is that turns our velocity of the point into zero. So we can ignore this first term, and we can ignore this last term, since it's all multiplied by vp as well. All we end up with for the kinetic energy of the rod is 1 half the moment of inertia of the rod about a multiplied by omega squared. This is the entire kinetic energy for our first body. Our second body is going to be the rod bc. And this one, we do have a velocity c of this point here, which we know. So we're going to write the kinetic energy about this point c using the velocity of c that we know. So this becomes a 1 half mass times vc squared plus 1 half. This time we have the moment of inertia about point c multiplied by omega squared. And these should be the mass of the rod multiplied by omega which is in the k direction, 
since this is omega BC, which we know is rotating counterclockwise, dotted with our radius of the center of gravity, which is L over 2 times this direction. So we'll end up with a L over 2 times cosine theta in the I direction, and that is negative plus L over 2 times sine theta in the J direction. Then finally, this is crossed with our known velocity VC, which is all in the I direction. So this finishes out our entire rod, VC, and our last terms come from the rotation of our cylinder. So we end up with 1 half MC, since we're talking about the roller now, multiplied by VC squared, which is the velocity of the center of mass, plus 1 half times IC, and this IC is I of the cylinder, so I'm going to write that as I sil, multiplied by omega squared. This last term is zero because the position of the center of mass of our roller with respect to the point that we're doing all this about is zero. They're the same point. Okay, so there are a lot of terms here, but this starts getting simpler pretty quickly. To start off, we're taking a cross product with I. So I crossed into I is zero, so we can ignore this term completely. So J crossed into I becomes a negative K, and K dotted with negative K is just negative one. So the first thing we're going to do is move this H2 term to the left-hand side. So we're going to end up with 2 times MR times G, and then we'll just have H1 minus H2. The next thing to realize is that this IA term and this IC term are both the same. We have two rods with the same length, both rotating about their ends. So these two terms we can just add together. And in so doing, we end up with IA omega squared. We're going to leave this term alone for now. And then this term, we said that the k's become a negative one. So I write this as negative m r omega multiplied by l over 2 sine theta multiplied by vc and then for these last two again i'm just going to write them down as they are though this omega should be omega c because this is talking about the rotation of the roller so next what we're going to do is use our kinematic equations in order to write everything out in terms of omega so we'll leave the left hand side alone for now Let's go ahead and plug in one third times the mass of the rod multiplied by L squared for IA. And that's going to be multiplied by omega squared. VC is 2 omega L sine theta. So if we square that, we end up with 4 omega squared L squared sine squared theta. This next term, we just need to substitute in VC, which is 2 omega L sine theta. This term becomes 1 half mc, again multiplied by vc squared. So we have 4 omega squared l squared sine squared theta. And then finally we can write the moment of inertia of the cylinder as 1 half times the mass times the radius squared multiplied by omega c squared, which is this term right here. So this becomes 4 omega squared L squared all over R squared multiplied by sine squared theta. So now let's recognize that the H here is simply equal to L over 2 times sine of theta. Now I've written all these as sine theta, but we need to recognize that we're talking about state 2 for all of these. So let me go back and change all of those. Next, we want to substitute in the heights of the two states. So the height of the center of mass is simply equal to L over 2 multiplied by sine of theta. So for each of these, we'll have an L over 2 and then a sine theta 1 minus sine theta 2. The L over 2 times the 2 just becomes L. We end up with MR times G times L and then the difference of those two sine terms. 
Now, each of these terms has an omega squared L squared. So I can actually take that out to the front. And then we end up with just one third times MR. This four and this two just become a single two. And so we end up with two times MR multiplied by sine squared theta two. This two and this two cancel out, and we've already taken out the omega L omega L. So we end up with just a minus MR sine squared theta two. This term and this term become two again, and then both of those halves and this four cancel out and become one. The R squared and the numerator and denominator cancel out. And so what we end up with is two MC sine squared theta plus one MC sine squared theta. Or we can just write that as a single term, three times the mass of our roller, the cylinder, multiplied by sine squared of theta two. Now we have an L on the left-hand side and an L on the right-hand side. So those actually cancel out as well. And we end up with a single L multiplied by our omega squared. And so now we can actually solve for omega. Omega is going to be the square root multiplied by the left-hand side, which is just mr times g times the difference of the signs, divided by L multiplied by an mr. I'm going to aggregate all of the mr terms. So that's going to end up as one-third plus we have a 2mr sine squared theta minus just mr sine squared theta. So this becomes sine squared theta 2. And then we also have our cylinder term, which is just 3 times the mass of the cylinder multiplied by sine squared theta 2. So this right here is our final answer. And if we were given values for our initial conditions and our ending states that we're interested in, then we would be able to solve for the value of the angular velocity of that final state. So just to recap, the purpose of all of this was to use some of the kinetics for an example problem and just plug those into the conservation of energy equation. The basics of the conservation of energy are really simple, but whenever you're starting to think about these problems that have three separate bodies, all of which have potential energies and kinetic energies, things get complicated very quickly. We wrote the kinetic energy equation as generally as we could so that we could write the kinetic energy about the point A and point C. Most of what we did here was just working through the math. We did have to take a cross product here in the middle, but a lot of the rest was just simple algebra. So I hope this was informative and I hope you enjoyed the video.